through an awesome series called Start the Party. In this series, we're talking about the promise Jesus made about getting the most out of life. Of course, we're not talking about a literal party. When we say party, we mean any effort to celebrate, serve, or enjoy being with others in a way that adds value to life. Being a party starter means being someone who makes space for that to happen however they can. This week, we're gonna talk about one specific way we can all choose to be party starters. But before we do, let me ask you a question. Have you ever needed a rescue, ever found yourself in a situation where you needed somebody to step in and help out? Well, I have. <laughs> so a few months ago, when I first got my license, I drove to an art show in Ventura where I met some friends. It was one of the first times I had driven on the freeway alone, so I was a little scared. But I got there and everything was fine and I felt accomplished that I drove all that way all alone. Anyways, everything was going fine, I had a great time. And when it was time for me to make my way back home, I felt confident that I could make the drive back home. I got to my car and I put the key in the ignition, but it wouldn't start. I tried to turn on the interior light, but it wouldn't work either. I realized I must have left my lights on or something, but my battery was dead. I ran back to the place the art show was and told my friends, and I had just gotten my license, so I had no idea what to do. But after freaking out about how I was gonna get home for a little, I finally calmed down and my friends and I decided to ask the guy who was working at the art show if he could help. He then came to my rescue and brought his car over to my car so he could jumpstart my car. He was super nice and told me that it happens to everyone and after that I felt a little better so I drove home and never made the mistake of leaving my headlights on again. See, we all need a little help from time to time, don't we? Everybody does. One glance at what's happening in the world around us shows us that. There are some serious things going on around us all the time. It feels like everywhere we look, somebody is struggling, in trouble, or needs help. War, hunger, poverty, racism, injustice, hate, spe hate speech, bullying, depression. People are facing some heavy realities each and every day. But even though that's sad, there's something else that's true about all of you. You care. It's one of the things I love about our generation. Maybe more than any gener generation before us, we're aware of the needs in the world around us. We see the wrong in the world, we read about it, we speak up, we post about it, and we support the cause in our own way. That's an incredible way to be a party starter. But sometimes, all that need in the world can be overwhelming. With so much, with so much access to what's happening, not just in our world, but in the entire world, it's easy to feel worn out by the pain around us. Maybe you see it all and aren't sure what to do to help. Maybe you've made an effort to do something, but you got discouraged when you didn't see a result. Maybe you chose to move on and hope that someone else will step up to help. Or maybe you feel so many feelings about so many wrongs in the world that you just have to look away so you don't get completely overwhelmed or anxious. This can be super challenging for all of us because as party starters, we're called to not just live the full life Jesus has promised, but to also help others do the same. But with so many hurts happening in the world, can we really make a big difference enough to make a change? During his life on earth, Jesus often taught people what it looks like to practically be a party starter. He really wanted people to experience a full life. A lot of times he used parables or stories to make sure the people were listening really got what he was trying to say. Today, we're gonna dive into one of those parables that can help us figure out how to step in and offer help when we see a need. But before we get into the story, let me set the scene. Jesus was asked by a religious leader at the time what it was gonna to take to follow him and live the full life God had promised. Now here's the thing. This guy wasn't asking because he really wanted to know. He was asking to trap Jesus. You see, the religious leaders knew the religious rules and regulations inside and out. And because of that, they had no idea of what they thought Jesus would say. 
But in the ultimate plot twist, Jesus didn't answer the way they expected. He answered their question with his own question. Let's take a look. Luke 10, 26 through 27 says, Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Sounds simple enough, right? Love God, love yourself, and love your neighbor. Now maybe you're thinking what this relig religious leader was thinking. Who exactly is my neighbor? To answer, Jesus told a story. In Luke 10, 30, he says, a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem, Jerusalem down to Jericho. He was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. Okay, let's stop there. This doesn't sound good, does it? Just a guy walking down a frequently traveled road when he was attacked, robbed, and left for dead. You think that the first person who walked by would step up and help, but they didn't. Jesus goes on to say, a Jewish priest saw this wounded traveler and kept walking. A Levite, a man who was also a spiritual leader in ancient Jewish society, came by this next guy and he kept walking too. At this point, this guy probably felt like help was most definitely not on the way. But then something incredible happens. Luke 10, 33 says, then a despised Samaritan came along. When he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. So let's break Let's break it down character by character. Samaritan uses his power to take care of the person no one expects him to take care of. Jesus uses his power to elevate the voice and the dignity of the Samaritan. Jesus is challenging the prejudice of religion. The religious leaders, known for using their power to abuse, ignore, and let other people down. What can you learn from each character's perspective? Which, which character do you resonate with most? This was a huge deal. Back then, Samaritans were considered to be the lowest of people by others. They were disliked, overlooked, and left out by a lot of groups at the time, including the religious leaders Jesus was telling the story to. But instead of letting them see the Samaritan as the villain, Jesus made the Samaritan the hero. The Samaritan didn't just see this Jewish man wounded on the side of the road and walked by. The Samaritan didn't choose to do nothing because of the differences between their two groups. Instead, the Samaritan felt compassion for the man, and that compassion motivated him to act. Jesus says the Samaritan in the story took care of the Jewish man's wounds, transported him to, the, to an inn where he could rest, and paid for every single thing he needed while he was there. Jesus made sure this guy did it all. Not because he had to, not because he wanted to hold it over this Jewish man's head, not to make himself look better, not because it would stop this from ever happening again. No, the Samaritan man helped because he was loving his neighbor as himself. See, when this religious leader asked Jesus who his neighbor was, he was basically saying, who am I obliged to help? Is it just the people I'm close to? The people who are the same as I am? The people who I think deserve it? But with this story, Jesus' answer was clear. Everyone is your neighbor. When we love Jesus and follow him, we have the responsibility to start the party simply by loving everyone in this world as our neighbor. One of the simplest yet most visually exciting party decorations that come to mind is the balloon. It can be a reminder to us to use what we have as a way to see, celebrate, and be with others. It just takes a little bit of air to get a big impact. But here's the most important thing. We get to be party starters for everyone, even the people unlike us even the people we dislike, even the people who don't like us, and even the people we like to ignore. See, the Samaritan wasn't just a neighbor. He was a party starter. Here's why. A party starter uses what they have for the good of others. Does that mean you have to help every single person in the world, that you have to support every cause, respond to every hurt, and show up to help every single time there's a need? No, you can't. That's just not possible. But as a party starter, you can choose to do what you can, when you can, to help your neighbor in need. Maybe it's sharing your lunch with someone at school who never has enough. Maybe it's donating your time or money to a cause that you care about. Maybe it's speaking up when you see someone being unkind or discriminating against someone else. 
Maybe it's just offering a prayer or a kind word to someone who needs it. The important thing to remember is that it isn't about what you do. It's about choosing to see the need and being, and being moved by compassion to meet it. It's about letting God's Spirit lead you to love your neighbor as yourself. Because a party starter uses what they have for the good of others. The good news is you have what it takes to be a party starter right now. With God, you have all you need to love, to love your neighbor. So, to start, ask yourself, who is my neighbor? In other words, who are the people I encounter on a regular basis? In my home, in my neighborhood, in my school, on my social media feed, who can I see as my neighbor? Number two, what do they need? Where are they hurting, struggling, or just in need of a little help? Number three, what do I have? What resources, influence, relationships, or talents do you have that you can leverage for the good of others? Once you've asked yourself all those questions, ask yourself this, number four. Now, how can I use what I have? Here's an even simpler way to think about this. I'd love for you to type this prayer in your notes app on your phone and start praying it over the next several weeks. God, please open my eyes to needs around me and show me what I can do to help. Help me to love my neighbor as myself. If you don't have a notes app, just write it down somewhere. Remember, this was Jesus' answer to the greatest question. What is the greatest command? It's a big deal. I know some of you might be thinking, be a neighbor, I couldn't possibly do that. I'm just struggling so much that I need someone to be a neighbor to me. If that's you, I want you to know that's okay. That's gonna be all of us from time to time. Remember, a party starter uses what they have for the good of others. Like we said, the needs around us can be overwhelming and we aren't made to meet all the needs that we see on our own. So let's start by asking, who's my neighbor? What do they need? What can I do? After that, it's simply time for you to start the party. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much that we are all gathered here today to learn more about you and how to be a party starter. I pray that you just be with all of us this week and that we can see, that we can realize how we can help our neighbors and use what we have for the good of others. I pray that everyone has a great rest of their week and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys, we'll see you next week.